Okay. Hey. I think we're good. How's it going? Hey, good. How are you today? Good, good. Excellent. Where are you coming out of? I'm in New York. Oh, are you in Manhattan? No, so I'm right outside the boroughs in Westchester County. So maybe oh. like 20 minutes from Manhattan. Okay, that's cool. Well, it's affordable, huh? A little better? A little better. I wouldn't say affordable. That may be an overstatement, but a little better than Manhattan. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful with New York. But hey, it's great to meet you. Thank you for taking a minute out today. I appreciate it. Of course, I'm excited. Me too. So before we get into your life and your career and what you're doing, I want to know the last three years was quite a thing with COVID. How did you survive it and how has it changed you? Yeah, so self-care was really what got me through. So right before the pandemic, actually, I had taken a year off of my job. I had basically quit. I took a year of travel. So I did a lot of traveling in 2019. And then ironically enough, I had planned to go back into the workforce February, January, February of 2020. Uh -huh. World shuts down. Uh -huh. So I have this like prolonged at home season, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and through that time, just self care, skin care, those were things that really just got me through like it, it, it put me in a good mental headspace having had that travel beforehand. And then that carried me through along with my self care, basically, it was the small things that we lost, like getting your hair done, getting your nails done, that yeah. you know, doing that stuff at home basically just kept me going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that 2020 time period reinvigorated everybody. I mean, mental health is a big deal now. Lots of things as far as self-care, even recalibrating careers. So it may have been the best time to get to that point to be like, all right, this is time to pivot and move into a different direction. Absolutely. Like when you have to sit with yourself, which I think a lot of the people had to do during the pandemic, you start learning your likes and dislikes and what's you what you want and your purpose. And you have all these thoughts running through your head as you sit with yourself. So if there was ever a time for self-discovery, I feel like the pandemic was a great time. Yeah, for sure. So let's get to the essence of exactly what you do on a daily basis. So I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders. One of the kids looks up and says, hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? So my day job is an executive assistant. I still have my nine to five. So okay. that's something that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. But I'm also the CEO and founder of a skincare brand called Silken. Um, and that comes with its own level of, of challenges on its own. So I run a company by night and I have a nine to five by day. <laughs> so, so when do you get to a point where that nine to five goes away? Are you at that point? What's your plan? How does that work? Yeah, not at that point yet. I think I have some financial milestones that would make me feel comfortable hitting before I leave my nine to five. But the thing about it is I actually enjoy what I do. I get to spend time with other CEOs and help them build their companies. I learned a lot of, I learned a lot of insight. I get to meet some really cool people. So I'm also not in a rush. I'm also not that person that hates their job and just can't wait to leave. So I think that's something that differentiates me a little bit. Well, and and as you probably very well know, being an entrepreneur, you know, taking notes and watching and observing is huge. Yes. Oh, yeah. I've learned so much just by sitting in rooms with people I never thought I'd be in a room with. You right. know? Yeah. So let me ask you this. When you were in the third grade, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a doctor. I always wanted to be a doctor. That's what I went to school for. I was pre-med and forensics up until, yeah, post-grad. That was my goal. Doctor, med school, the whole shebang. Wow. So what happened? So I was working in toxicology for maybe two years post-grad. And then I just realized like this was just not something I wanted to do for the next 30 years. And then I realized that I couldn't think of one thing that I wanted to do for the next 25, 30 years. Yeah. So I needed to pivot. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah. You know, they always talk about how do musicians and actors remember lines. But when you get into medicine, you have to remember a lot. A lot of information. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing that always blows me away when I hear about people going to school for medicine, even law, like the amount of information that you have to not only divulge, but that you have to retain, not yes. just for tests. You have to be in a room with somebody's life in your hands. That's a pretty big deal. Literally, and it's so funny because the running joke, so I graduated um a couple years before the pandemic and the running joke now is, I mean, if you got your med degree during the pandemic doing like online labs, you know what I mean? Not doing practicals in person. I don't know. I need to see some credentials now when I go to my doctor's office. Like, when did you graduate? Uh -huh. What year was that? Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. I never even thought about that. That's crazy. Um, mm -hmm. You're obviously highly driven. Um, let me ask you this. Talk to me about where you were born and raised and how these seeds got into you to not only get into medicine, but to become an entrepreneur and to be as highly driven as you are. 
Yeah. So I've been born and raised in Westchester. I've lived here all my life. Um, my mom's side of the family is from the U.S. and my dad's family is an immigrant. So I'm first generation American on my dad's side. And anything, if you come from an immigrant family, you know, like that work ethic is instilled in you from day one. You know, the sacrifices that have been made for you to get to a certain level. And it just gives you a certain level of ambition to be like, I have to make it happen or I want to make it happen. So I've always been that straight A student. I've always had a type A personality, very driven, very organized. D all of the above. Um, and then my love for medicine. I'm not sure where that came from. I think I've always been very sciencey. That's something I always did well in school with. Um, so just kind of putting all those factors together in a pot, basically, just kind of brought me to this point. And then after having the revelation that I had where, you know, I didn't really want to be confined to the structure of a nine to five forever. It was like, okay, well, I have to make something else happen for me. And I think giving myself the grace to pivot was huge because of course, when you spend so much money in school, you spend so much time in school. I think a lot of people have a fear of pivoting, you know, cause now I'm in a space where I'm technically not using the degree that I worked so hard for. Um, and I think appreciating the skills and the discipline that came with, like, like you said, getting through a degree of that magnitude, it still applies. So, you know, the grace to pivot has also just been a very interesting thing as well. So yeah. I hope that answered your question. <laughs> it did. You know, no, 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 it totally did. And you know, I, what I find interesting is I come from the Gen X uh, generation and we were kind of like, we were trying to get rid of all of those old antiquated notions of what you had to do your whole life and waiting for this pension and all of that. But I noticed even with younger generations, there's more of this carpe diem of like being your own boss, doing exactly what you want to do, finding that place instead of getting 20, 30 years in, like you said, and you feel this regret, you can't do anything about it. Like there's more of a, you know, the mirror is more in front of the younger generation now to say, I'm going to take control and be my own boss. Absolutely. And I feel like there's just so much more information on it. We can't act like we're not in an information age. So the things that we have access to with the internet and the resources, I mean, nowadays you can learn almost anything on YouTube for free. Uh -huh. So the access to information that we have that our parents didn't have, I think also gives us like a, a leverage point to, to pursue the things that we wanted to do with, with different limitations. That's very true. So who's been a hero for you in your life? My grandmother, that is my A1 day one when my parents worked a lot to be able to put me through school and all of these things. So she was like my main form of childcare. So that was my my bestie. And, you know, like I said, she wasn't born here either. She worked hard, brought my dad up here. And, you know, then I came along. So she she is a hard worker. She's a bad woman for sure. <laughs> So, so there's a lot of examples of entrepreneurs out there that really rose up through the ranks and really got to be successful. What's the story that resonates most with you of a company or an entrepreneur that did that? I don't think I have one. I don't think I have anyone around me business-wise that I think has been very influential. I think it's actually kind of the opposite. So quick story, um, when I was in high school, I had the opportunity to hear Maya Angelou speak. She um, does spoken word and poetry. And I've spoken about this before, um, so watching her perform when we walked into the studio, the, the stadium, basically, that she performed in, um, a lot of people, maybe 300 people in the room, um, and there's always chatter before some type of performance or anything. And she literally just walked out and she sat down. And I mean, the whole stadium just got silent. And at that age, that's just something I remember so vividly, wow. being able to see someone just command a presence by just sitting and I think that is something that I've I've hoped or strived to attain that level of presence, whether it be in my work, whether it be in my personal life. Um, that's something that has stuck with me for a very long time. Because to me, that's a powerful thing. I think we're in a society with a lot of noise and everyone has an opinion and everyone has something to say. But to be able to walk into a room and just your presence command a space, I think that's a different level of, yeah. of, of something there that I think a lot of people overlook for sure. Yeah. So speaking of someone like Maya, if you could meet anybody on the planet right now and spend some time with them, who would it be? Ooh, anyone on the planet? I don't know. That's a deep question. I've never <laughs> thought about that. <laughs> we can circle back around if something pops in. Yeah, we can circle yeah. Back around. So, you know, obviously people like Maya Angelou and others are very highly motivated. What is your motivation every day you wake up? What gets you up and moving and motivated to not only do your day job nine to five, but to also have your own business? 
it's my family, my future family, for sure. I don't have any kids right now, but I know the childhood that I had. And I think my parents did their best to give me their best. And I'm greatly appreciative of it because without that, I wouldn't be here. But I think it's just natural for that. You always want better for the next generation. So laying that foundation, that legacy, that financial um, wealth that transcends generations, that's, that's the motivation for sure. So, so far as an entrepreneur, what's your best success story? My best success story. I think it actually happened in DM conversation. So I'm very integral with my customers. So I, I, you know, I like to chat in the DMs. Anytime there's an order, I like to follow up with like a text message or like a, a video or something just to kind of see what their experience was. And our main product is a clay mask. Um, and it's good for like detoxing the skin, things like that. It helps with like acne and other common skin concerns. So um, I had followed up with this young woman and she was just so grateful to have come across the product because she said it just worked so well for her. And she was like, it just gave her the confidence to really go out there and be badass. And, you know, she was like, maybe a couple of weeks later, she had a job interview and she was like, you know, just feeling really insecure. She was in a very low place um, with in many areas. Um, but just having something that cleared up her skin and just that her skincare alone gave her the confidence to go in and smash that job interview. And she's like, like she got the job and, you know, she was able to kind of provide for herself financially. And she's like, I know it's something so small, but thank you for one, creating this product and two, kind of just like following up with her um, in that regard. She felt seen. And I think as an entrepreneur, especially when you're a purpose-driven entrepreneur, when you hear those type of success stories from your customers, it that is also another level of motivation. So since you're so scientifically based and, and have a background in medicine, how have you developed these products? What's been your involvement with that? Oh, super involved. So first off, any if you're in the beauty industry at all, finding a good US-based manufacturer, probably the hardest thing to do. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. So yeah. it took me almost a year to find like a good manufacturer that I trusted that could make the formulations the way that I wanted them to. Um, and, and be very hands-on and involved, like going to their facilities and, you know, touring the place, um, the ingredients, some of the ingredients that I wanted um, aren't domestic. So, you know, making sure that those are ethically sourced as well. Um, it took a long time to be able to formulate that in the capacity that I wanted to, especially with my background. I'm very aware of lab protocol and the things that I'm looking for that maybe some other people um, may overlook. So being able to find that was a process in itself. Yeah, I bet. So of all the things that you've done up to this point in your life, what are you the proudest of? What am I the proudest of? I'm the proudest of quitting my job and pursuing my passion. When I took that year sabbatical to really find myself, that was super scary. One, because I didn't have anything lined up. I was living off of my savings. For the first couple of months, I didn't even tell anyone that I quit my job. Like when people would call me between nine to five, I would not answer. So they would think I was at work. Um, and I think there was that fear of failure as in, okay, well, you, you know, you spent all this time in school and now you're not using your degree and now you don't have a job and you don't have a plan, you know, traveling to find yourself isn't something that's always glorified. Um, so having that confidence to, to do that and take that time and reground myself and come up with a plan I, and not being so fearful of other people's opinions of what I was going through and what I was doing. I think that's one of my proudest moments because I wouldn't be here without that, that Absolutely. season of my life. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to kind of circle back a little bit to the, if you can meet anyone and kind of reframe this a little bit. If you could see any event in human history that's gone on, what would you love to have seen happen firsthand? Any event? I think the women's rights movement, if we bring it back to like the mid 1900s, I just feel like that was like a, a badass time to be alive yeah. as a woman, um, just to kind of see the people in the forefront. You know, it takes a lot of courage, a lot of confidence, a lot of coordination to pull off certain things and not just socially, but politically as well. So I guess to be able to kind of mingle with some of those women to see what they were thinking, how they were motivated, how they put these things together. I think that would be super interesting. So let's say we talk in 10 years from now, what do you want to see happen with your life? Maybe five or 10 years. What are you really hoping happens? So for sure, I hope Silken is a success. <laughs> I hope Silken scales to nine and 10 figures. Um, I hope our podcast behind the Silk reaches women who um, just need a little bit of encouragement. I hope that we're able to touch people in that regard. And I also do want to create some type of foundation based in silk and that really helps women um, academically or on their on their entrepreneurial journeys as well. I think the philip 
philanthropic philanthropic i hope that's i'm saying that right yeah, the yeah. giving back aspect of any business i think is also super important we live in a capitalist society and a lot of things are for profit i don't think there's anything wrong with that but for profit for profit for a purpose i think is even better yeah yeah so let me ask you this everyone out there that has a good backbone of what you're doing and how you're doing it you're clearly very motivated and very skilled at what you do but if you had a pitch right now to somebody that's on the fence about your products, what are you going to say to them to totally lure them in and say, this is the place that you need to be? If you want to see a change in the beauty industry, if you're tired of unrealistic beauty standards, if you're over not feeling like enough, I think that's who Silken really speaks to. We're really big on real skin, you know, real skin, real women. For real life, we're dealing with real issues. That who that's who Silken is for. So Erica is the person behind all of this. Everyone has a perception of you, family, friends, uh, clients, colleagues, customers, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? I think I'm still in my growing season. I think that being an entrepreneur, you never stop learning. You never stop growing. I think I'm always taking a lot of feedback on a daily basis and kind of just sifting through the things that can help improve me as a person, as a CEO, um, as a wife, as a person, as all these different things. So I think I'm on the same life journey as everyone else, just trying to figure it out. And I hope that I can kind of give some valuable information along the way to help the next person. So anyone out there that wants to pick up your products, listen to your podcast, know more about you, where is the best place to go? So Silken Co. on Instagram, S-I-L-K-E-N-N-C-O. Um, all of our products are listed there. Um, for the podcast, Behind the Silk Pod, we just launched a few weeks ago and we we're having some really, really awesome conversations that, I mean, are just blowing my mind at that. Um, and if you're interested in me, the Erica Nicole on Instagram is where you can connect with me online. Excellent. Erica, this has been so wonderful. Thank you for your story. Thank you for opening up. It's a fascinating story. Best of luck with everything. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Take care.